Hello and welcome to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. And today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this landscape painting of Loch Orr in the Highlands of Scotland. This is the photograph that I've used as inspiration from Pixabay, the royalty free site. I shall leave a link to the photograph in the description below. The first thing to do is to simplify the scene down into the main elements and then just sketch the simplified version out on the page, which I've um, time lapsed for you. I just want my mid ground trees, foreground trees, the lock, and the distant mountains. And then there'll be the sky, of course, and the poles or posts in the foreground across the water, which are a really nice feature. Here's the finished um, sketch. Pause it here if you'd like to refer to it or follow the link below for a copy of the line work and an advert free version over on Patreon. I'm using Milford 100% cotton cold pressed watercolour paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 20 degrees. I'm going to start off using the wet in wet method and I'm using a large wash brush. This is a size 20 is Skoda Ultimo brush and I'm wetting patches of the sky and then I shall paint into the sky with cobalt blue around the dry patches so that I can create some clouds in the sky. I think it goes without saying that I'm not trying to copy the sky in the photograph, I'm just painting something loosely based on it and just enjoying the process of sky practice. Once I've got my sky in, then I'll continue using large wash brushes and a flat brush and maybe a couple of small round brushes to just build up the scene, the first layer of it, because I want to get in my light values and most of my mid values. Um, the lake is going to be slightly greyer than the sky, so I shall add some Payne's Grey to my cobalt blue for that. And then I shall build up my tree colours with um, sap green, maybe a touch of perylene green. I've got some raw umber um, and Payne's grey and I'll build up the scene using those colours until I get most of the paper covered. I can lift out a little paint from the clouds using a crumpled up tissue. As always, I'm filming a studio practice, um, a warm up that I do in the studio, learning about watercolour painting and my aim for this painting is to try and achieve the effect of the distant mountains trying to keep my colours sort of paler and more muted in the background but still keeping the tonal values right so I get a sense of depth and distance and aerial perspective.
So I've got the base colour in for most of my mountains, for the, um, the trees that are growing over most of the base of the mountains. And the tops of the mountains are just the same colour as the sky. I shall uh, put in all the values and a small amount of detail onto the mountains, wet on dry, once I've finished this first layer. But for now, I'm focusing on getting the trees in and the foreground beach. Just before this layer dries, I'll begin to add some darker tones. I've added some perylene, perylene green to my sap green and a touch of raw umber here. And I'm just dotting in some darks while the paint is still damp. Fairly rich dark paint here will softly diffuse into the lighter green and give me some variation. I can use the palette knife to scrape through the rich paint and that gives me some lighter marks and that will help when I come to define my tree trunks a bit more in the wet on dry stage a bit later. If you don't like to do this then of course you can paint in your tree trunks um, fully with a brush at a later stage. So that's the first wet on wet layer painted. I now need to leave it to dry completely and then I'll come back and finish the painting off painting wet onto the dry painting. The painting is completely dry. The sky is finished, I won't be doing any more to it, but I need to work into the rest of the painting to bring it together. I've got lovely loose diffused washes um, and mid-tones and light tones, I now need to increase the value in places, add a little bit more detail in others. The first thing I'm going to do is um, get that dark tree line at the edge of the far distant shore of the lake painted in. It goes up quite far, it's got a fairly ragged shape, so I'll start off getting a nice straight um, horizon line and then I'll add a bit of shape to it. And I'm using my Skoda Perla size 14 brush and this is perylene green, sap green. It's blued down with a bit of Payne's grey and a bit of cobalt blue and a touch of burnt sienna. 
And once the shape for that is just about right, and all I'm trying to do is suggest the shape, so I'm not painting details, just values, which should give me the suggestion of detail, I'll use a much paler mix of that to paint the top of the mountains so that we get some sense of depth, distance and aerial perspective. So that's the mountains just about finished. I'm hoping that that's light enough to give us that sense of aerial perspective. It'll probably dry back a bit lighter, maybe a bit too light, but I'm going to leave that as it is and trust the process. And if it is a little bit too light, that'll be fine. I'd rather it was too light than too dark. Things tend to get paler and cooler as they go into the distance, although part of the mountain is a brighter green because that's where the sunlight is hitting um, the trees and the slopes of the mountain. Using a palette knife, I've scraped a little bit of texture through the mountain as well, just to add a bit of variety. I'm not going to overdo that because I don't want the eye to be drawn to that um, detail too much. You notice that I've negatively painted around the mid-ground trees, uh, the pale group of trees there. Um, I'll now work on defining the headland a little more and the trees, getting more depth and darkness and shape into this foreground tree in particular and uh, working on the bank just with a few details to suggest stones and rocks on the shore of the lock.
The corner of the three quarter inch flat brush or any size flat brush is really useful if you just use the corner to paint sort of little uh, flat bottomed triangular shapes and that can give you some nice shapes for rocks and stones in the foreground but also trailing off into the water. Any marks that are a bit hard just smudge through with your finger and this just helps to soften them back but make sure you smudge in the direction of what you are trying to soften back so I'm smudging horizontally to keep the ground plane nice and flat. So that's the ground plane just about done and I'm going to work on getting some darks in and around the tree trunks and then work up into the tree canopy. That should hopefully build up the look of the dense woodland on the edge of the lock. I've swapped to the rigger brush now and using that same dark mixture, which is perylene green, sap green, some burnt sienna, a bit of Payne's grey. I'm just running a few darker branches through here and there amongst the shadows and amongst the canopies, just before I start to darken up some of the canopies in a bit. And then once I've got my branches looking okay, my finer branches, I'll add some darker marks to the posts in the foreground using that dark mixture and then go in with some burnt umber for the tops of the poles. I want to keep the poles quite simple even though they create quite a striking point of interest in the front of the painting leading us across up towards the uh, statuesque mid-ground trees and then the mountains. I don't want them to be too detailed so just simple lines dark at the bottom and then lighter raw umber lines across the top. keeping the height sort of fairly uneven and then I will take um, quite a, a light grey and just put a wiggly line beneath each one just to suggest a little bit of reflection on the surface of the water of the lock. And after that, I'll swap back to my various shades of green, keeping my rigger brush and just break up the edge of the tree canopies a little 
um, and darken up some of the canopies in places uh, just to add a little bit more depth. So I'm going to call that finished. It's a nice loose painting. I think there's just enough detail there to bring the painting together. And I'm very pleased with the distant mountains. They might be a little bit light in places, but I'd rather they were too light than too dark. So I shall leave them like that and just try and see if I can get the values right first time. The next time I try to paint a scene like this. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this and that it'll give you the confidence to have a go at something similar yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments. I always really enjoy reading all of your comments, even if I don't get the time to reply to all of them. And thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. We really do appreciate you. And if you'd like to support the channel, then please follow the links below to either Morgana or my Patreon page. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.